Hey, good day. Oh, that's better. Okay, yeah. Hey, good day. Drew here. This is your Queen City cabbie here in Bangor, Maine. All right. It's a nice, quiet Saturday. I've had a few pickups today. Give you a quick view of the outside. Dow Air Force Base, or the former Dow Air Force Base here in Bangor. Quit being a base quite a while ago. Now this area here is the University of Maine at Augusta. And I'm here because uh, that over there, that's uh, the Hope House. It's one of the homeless shelters here for Bangor. Yeah, there's this guy who's a regular. He goes to Walmart, buys these, uh, you know, the spray air cans. Yeah, this canned air. So you spray and clean out your computers. He buys those. So he, he's got a lot of injuries. So that's what he gets. So he goes to Walmart to get those. All right. Had a cool story yesterday. Uh, kind of typifies... Uh, the problems of cabs here in Bangor, which is laziness. Because uh, a lot of the cabbies are just these these old, crusty types. Especially Dick's Taxi. Yeah, the guys there are kind of old, and uh, they don't seem to provide much customer service. Um, but that's besides the point. Because uh, I'm just reflecting a lot of the comments I get uh, from, you know, just complaints that... Dick's Taxi will say they all be there in a half hour and then show up two hours late. But the yeah, guys just people complaining about them. So yesterday, after I uh, was uh, taking somebody to the Cape Heart area, it's kind of a neighborhood, poorish neighborhood, pretty close to here. Uh, I got a call from. Here at the airport, uh, there were nine Air Force people needed to ride to the Hilton. All right? So they, they asked, well, do you guys have two cabs? Because we have nine people with bags. So I said, well, no, I'm, it's just me today. So they said, okay. So we'll see what else is available. So they called around, couldn't find anybody. Everybody was busy. It was going to take them two hours, right? That's kind of typical. We're so busy. It's going to be two hours. So pretty much I was the only cab to respond. And then once I dropped that person up at Cape Heart, uh, I said, well, I'm going to run by the airport. And if we find any cabs there, I'll get them to come along so we can just get you guys there uh, in one trip, right? That was the idea anyways. So I do, I, as soon as I drop them off, I run by the terminal. There's a cab there. He's one of these um, one cab company. A lot of those here in Big are actually quite a few. Um, yeah, just some guy with a cab, right? Yeah. Somebody I don't really see that much, but anyways, he's sitting there. So I said, hey, come on over. Like I said, I got nine uh, Air Force guys waiting at the uh, General Services Terminal. It's uh, like on the north side of the airport. So he's, I said, come on over. Like I said, we got nine guys uh, needing to go to the Hilton. And he just looks over at me because he's sitting in front of the terminal. So he just turns to me and says, No, I'll take my chances with the flight coming in. In that tone of voice, you know, oh, I'll just take my chances with the flight coming in. What? All right. So I went, picked them up. Like I said, I managed to fit four of them in here. They... Uh, Again, this is a Ford Explorer, and of course, on uh, that back area there, which you can turn into, you know, put the seats up. That whole thing was literally full to the ceiling with their bags. Yeah, it was, it was a lot. 
So I get to the Hilton, and I was supposed to go back, but they said, well, uh, they got a ride. And it turns out, like, if the airport basically lent them a van to use as a shuttle, because they were going to be here for a couple of days. All right? Right, so that sort of worked out. Right, but uh, that uh, kind of reflects, again, Bangor taxi drivers here. It's kind of a reflection of uh, their general attitude. Because, uh, uh, I don't know, it, these habits I picked up in Los Angeles is that, one, you got to hustle like crazy. If you're going to make it, you got to just, you got to really move. Uh, it was too often that people call two or three cabs. And if you're not there, somebody else is going to jump on it. That was the unfortunate thing, especially in the black community. Yeah, it was way too common that uh, people complain that cabs never show up, right? Or show up too late, so they call two or three cab companies. And they just grab the first one that comes along, right? So by the time you get there, nobody's there. So you've just wasted a big old trip. It's a really vicious circle in Los Angeles, just like that, of this kind of attitude. You know, how do you expect service when everyone's pulling that kind of crap, right? <sighs> that was bad. Luckily, I haven't experienced that very much here. I did experience that over somebody from the uh, Ramada did pull that crap Uh yeah, somebody at Ramada called for a trip. I went over, couldn't get an answer, no one showed up. Then this other cab drives up, and we compared the number and found it was the same person, so we both took off. All right? So, who knows? Okay, so, this is Drew here in Bangor. This is your Queen City cabbie. Live in Bangkok. All right. See y'all later.